Tim, and welcome to the About Anything channel. On this channel, we'll discuss whatever comes to mind. Over the years, I've seen many videos on YouTube, articles on Yahoo, or posts on Reddit about why you should never go on a cruise. The creator of the video, the writer of the article, usually go through the same recycled reasons as why they don't like a cruise and why they would never cruise. Funny, in all those videos or articles, they never give an example of vacation they would do. I'm pretty much thinking these folks just stay at home all the time and never go anywhere unless they can take the housekeeper, gardeners, pool boys, and nannies with them. So I decided to put together a video that will rebut the 15 reasons I found listed from various sources on the internet. Having been on 20 cruises, I will give you honest answers. I will even tell you guys if an example is a good example of why to stay away from a cruise. During this video, I may reference as a comparison, a land trip I have coming up in about two months that's going to Las Vegas. You, know, you can't cruise there. So here you go. And in no particular order. The first one is that cruise ships stink. The writer cites a scenario in which there is sewage in a hallway. Luckily for me and my cruises, I never experienced it. But I can appreciate that this have a possibility to happen. The access to the toilets for the cruise on a ship is from the hallway. So if a bathroom needs to be repaired, they will open it up in the hallway. But that is just the door in the repair. Other than the famous carnival poop cruise, this is very rare. But I'm not going to say it can't happen. But I've been in some stinky hotels in my life, especially in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Number two, outdated ships. Well, some ships are older than others, but almost all of them have gone through millions of dollars of facelifts every so many years. So if you catch a ship at the end of a long run before a dry dock, which is what it's called when the ship is out of service for months getting spruced up, ships may seem outdated. But let me tell you, again, back to Atlantic City, and I've seen in Las Vegas, some of the older hotels are in need of work as well. Plus, with a cruise ship, there are so many personnel who live on board whose job is the maintenance. You always see them fixing something up while you're on board. They work hard to keep the ship clean and in working order. But if the issues bother you, try booking a new ship. You'll see the difference. Number three, cabin size. Well, this goes to what you can afford. Smaller price, smaller room. Bigger price, you get a bigger room. Have any of these writers ever traveled in Europe? I'm currently researching a land trip to Europe next year because I want to visit inland and I've come across some very cozy rooms and that is for only the ones that list the square footage. Many of the cheap rooms don't even list that. On a cruise ship, most cabins are equivalent to a studio room at a hotel like in Vegas. It's a bed and a bathroom, but they do have a desk and drawers to put your stuff in for the week. Granted, families that are trying to save money by staying four in a room, well, that's tight. As a formal travel agent, I've told customers and booked customers of four into two connecting rooms. Prices, are, of course, are just a little bit more, but you get two bathrooms and two bedrooms. With an interconnecting door, families actually can stay together. Also, this gives a little bit of privacy for those who are changing or if certain members of the party are trying to sleep. Same thing will happen when you put four in a hotel room in Vegas or at Disney, unless you're willing to pay up for the one or two bedroom suites. And cruise ships have some very nice, sweet accommodations for those who are willing to pay. Number four, cruising is unsafe. I'm putting this on the list as just one item, but I'm going to touch on four different areas around safety. First, you may get sick. This could either be seasickness, the stomach bug, or COVID. Well, if you're prone to motion sickness, yeah, cruising may not be for you. Same goes, though, for a thrill ride at Disney. Same for going out on a yacht or a fishing boat, or maybe even the same for flying. But, you know, there is medicine that you could take prior to sailing, right? To be honest, I do take one the first two days, but then I eventually stop after that. I don't know if I really need it, but it just makes me feel more comfortable. You also get bands on your wrist or patches behind your ear. No one's going to make fun of you if you have a band or a patch. Cruising right now, is being set to the highest standards of any travel industry regarding COVID. Still today, as in early August, you need to have the vaccine for most cruise lines if you're an adult and still have to show a negative COVID test prior to two days boarding for sailings over 
five days on again on most cruise lines. No other vacation does this. When I go to Vegas, I can hop on a plane, unmask, and check into my hotel and sit in front of slot machines for hours. And no one's going to test me or check me for my shots. But cruise, yes, they will. The next unsafe topic is a safety drill. Yeah, I don't like the safety drill either. But damn, it was only a half hour of the day before you even depart. And it is still a very important process. Especially if you think cruising in general is unsafe, then pay attention to the drill. And in the last couple of years, they actually changed the drill. On most lines now, you don't have to stand anywhere for a half hour. Just sometime as you board, watch a five-minute video on their app. This marks you as seeing the video. Then, as you're exploring the ship, you stop by your muster, which is your meeting station. This may be the theater or a restaurant or a bar. You meet there. They scan your ID, and then you're free to go. Easy peasy. The next topic is crime. Like you don't think crime happens at Disney or in Las Vegas? I'll tell you what. If I'm out late at night and have to return to my room in Vegas or Atlantic City, I'm actually scared if I have to walk the streets. But while I'm aware of my surroundings on the ship, I am less nervous about making that trip back to my room. I mean, if a crime does happen, the culprit is not going too far. And just like hotels, public hallways and public areas are on CCTV. The last unsafe topic is a person go over, going overboard. It does happen, but it's almost never. And I can't think of an example where it happened by accident. There was at least one major factor involved with the going overboard. Being drunk and then being drunk and stupid are the biggest reasons. People feel they can hang from their balconies like Spider-Man or something. Yes, there have also been examples of which a person had help going overboard, but those crimes seem to be crimes of convenience, and person A was looking for a way to get rid of person B, and they did. And unfortunately, suicide is a factor in some going overboard. Going overboard in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, has a high probability that a suicide attempt will succeed. Number five, ship overcrowding. Can't debate. This happens. But it only happens to you maybe once or twice a cruise. And most of the time, you know it's going to happen before you, you go there. Because you're going to a popular place at a popular time. The prime example of this is a pool on sea days. Obviously, a ship's pool area is not as big as a public beach. And it's the favorite pastime of many cruisers. So on a sea day, you have me. Can't argue. It will be crowded. But this is no different than when you have to stand in line for two hours to ride a 30-second roller coaster at an amusement park. And you're inching up ever so slowly. Why? Because it's crowded. Navigating the pool on sea days takes some planning and help from other family members. If you have a member not sunning with you, have them jump in your grave if you have to go to the bathroom or go eat. Because you will lose your seat in the prime areas. Also, go out earlier than you really want to if you want to get a certain spot. Whether or not it be in the sun or the shade. And if you're looking for a shaded spot, I would recommend walking around other areas of the outside deck. There are very comfortable couches and chairs on the outside away from the pool and in the shade number six rude passengers well this happens everywhere i think we now call them karens again this will happen to me in vegas in two months people from many different cultures who don't align to the same cultural norms as you tend to come off as rude to you one thing that happens to me on sea and on land is bad elevator etiquette. It's not just the kids hitting each floor. It's the people trying to get on before you get off. Boggles my mind why this one can't be followed. I take the stairs as much as I can. You know, I'll be eating a lot, so I figure taking the steps may balance it out. <laughs> With that being said, you will find some of the nicest people in the cruise if you allow yourself to be nice too. You will see these people often. Whether it's because they have the cabin right next to yours, or they tend to hit breakfast the same time as you, or they remember you from an excursion you were on together, or they're seated near you at dinner. Jeez, you may even see the same people in the same seat at the same bar all week or at the same slot machine every night of the cruise. You will get to know these people. You'll see them in various forms. You may see them before they get their coffee and they still look like they're asleep. You may see them at the pool, and then you may see them all dressed up for a nice dinner depending on the cruise line. And they see you just the same. So if you allow it, you may even make friends. You may find some 
that is very near to your hometown. So open up and be friendly. Number seven, the time spent on the island. This is a fair critique if you want it to be. But the thing that is being left out of this criticism is that you're visiting multiple places, usually multiple countries or islands on a cruise. While on a land trip, you tend to go to the same city for the duration. When I go to Vegas, my trip's to Vegas. It won't continue on to San Diego, then to Seattle, and then to Vancouver. It's Vegas, then home. If you go to Disney, you're most likely staying in the whole time in Orlando. Even with a land trip to Europe, which I'm planning, we're going to five different countries over 12 days. The waking time at each is similar to a cruise. We arrive in the new country and to our hotel late in the morning, maybe explore that day, then get some sleep before touring all day the next day, and maybe an eight hour tour max, and then it's back to the hotel area for dinner and to bed to get ready for a transportation the next day to the next country. Think of cruising as a sampler for an area, especially in the Caribbean in which you can hit four to five ports on a seven day cruise. See which port you like for the time that you were there. Then come back to that place for an extended stay. So if you like the Bahamas, well, then come back to Atlantis for a few days. But with a cruise, you can try out an area before deciding where to have an extended stay. St. Martin is my choice in the Caribbean. Same goes for trips to Europe on a cruise. You get a taste of each different country. Then you can decide which one will work for a good extended stay. Number eight, food sucks. This is one topic I hate to talk about, food and food quality. When I read a review that contains food opinions, I skip that section. Why? Because food quality is an opinion. Before I travel on a cruise, and even on land, my meals a lot of times are ordered by a number at a drive-thru window, so anything served on a plate looks nice to me. But we all have different feelings and taste buds. Some like less salt, some like more. Some like spice, some do not. The best reviews for crews just post the menus for us to see what is offered. What is offered is not subjected to an opinion, while food quality is. Even the service on a cruise really is an opinion. Some can wait five minutes between salads and the main course. Some can wait ten. Some think they should be back-to-back. A review should give factual information on how long it took to be served, but their opinion will not matter if it's too long or too short or just right. Just the facts. And honestly, I know I'm doing a video based on my opinion of cruising as compared to others, but for the most part, I'm trying to leave my opinions out and just give the factual details. But if the food is the main category of a cruise review, I won't read it unless there's factual details included. Say dining times, the location of the restaurant, the dress code, stuff like that. So does cruise food suck? Well, as a fact, I have never gone hungry on a cruise. Just saying. Number nine, dining times and show times assigned. For dinners, this has basically changed over the years. Cruise lines are now offering more flexible dining times, along with dining times on a schedule still being an option. The drawback to flex dining, and just like it would be an issue in Vegas or Disney, you're subject to a wait unless you make reservations. I know the argument is hey, I'm on vacation. I don't want structure and I don't want to eat at any certain time. Great. You don't have to, but you may be subject to a wait and let you do some planning. Just like any sit down restaurant on land. If everyone wants to eat at 630, well, there might be a wait. And if you're late on making those reservations, you may not get the times you want. Same if you're making a reservation on open table for a land restaurant. The time you want may not be available. There are only so many tables in a venue. Shows are similar. The shows don't run every day of the week. So there's a schedule of performances. The theater only holds X number of people. So again, cruise lines like Royal Caribbean use reservations on their bigger ships. And if you don't have a reservation, you can still try to enter 15 minutes before the showtime and try to find a seat. So no one's forcing you to a certain showtime, but the shows do only run a few times a week. So it is best to plan. Number 10, ships movements. This is another thing that's reduced with newer ships because they now have stabilizers that help with that. But yes, if you hit some weather, there'll be movement. Just like hitting turbulence in the sky. Typically, movement is something that you get used to after just a few days. Funny part is, when coming home, 
you sometimes feel like you're still on the ship. By the way, I'm always referring to a cruise ship as a ship. It is not a boat. It is a ship. Number 11, sunburn. I really can't believe this is a critique against cruising. Some folks complain you might get too much sun. Um, yeah, the sun does shine everywhere, even over water and even over a port to call. I'm sure I'll get sunburn in Vegas in two months. Number 12, extra cost. Truth is, this one's on you. Once you pay your fare, you should know what is included and what is not. Drinks, soda, and alcohol are the big ones that are not included. It is not included in the price because not everyone takes part in those things. Just like when you book Disney, you may pay for one park or two parks. Some folks like Magic Kingdom, but won't go to the others. So they only pay for one park. So I don't drink alcohol. I don't pay for it. But I do get soda. So I pay for it. I know that going in. Just like in Vegas, when I want a soda, I'm going to have to pay for it. Stuff like photos, you pay for them. You don't need to go get a photo on a cruise. Wi-Fi, you don't need this if you don't want to. I mean, I want to, but some people want to be off the grid. For some, that's the point of going away. There are lots of people who walk off the ship with zero balances on their bill because they can say no to photos. They can just walk around the port area for free. They don't need a t-shirt with the name of the ship on it, etc. Number 13, ship's photographers. The complaint here is they're everywhere. True. You can get your picture taken on a cruise without a problem. At dinner, about two times a week, they'll come up to you and ask if you want a picture. A polite, no thank you, just moves them along. Trust me. It's much easier to say no to shift photographers than it is to say no to the timeshare sellers in Vegas. Trust me on that one. Number 14. Staff is overzealous. Staff works for tips. This is how they make their money. Almost all of them are sending their money home to help support folks back home. So they want to make sure you're happy. So yes, they tend to overask. Was everything okay? Again, a yes it was. Works. And if it was not, it's okay to say it wasn't. They will do whatever it takes to make sure it's right for you. So going back to the food, in your opinion, if the food wasn't okay, just let them know. And they'll let you try something else from the menu. They won't be mad at you. Number 15 Entertainment is bad. Again, another opinion one. There tends to be shows from many different genres or time periods, so they're not going to be liked by everyone. As for the talent and looking at the resumes they flash on the screen before the show, they must all come from a deep, talented background. And as for the shows themselves, there has been a shift, especially on Royal and Norwegian cruise lines, to have on their new ships actual full-length Broadway shows for free. So I've seen Hairspray, Grease, Chicago, a Million Dollar Quartet. And I know on other ships, they had Rock of Ages, Cats, We Will Rock You, Saturday Night Fever, Mamma Mia. How much would it cost to see any of these on Broadway nowadays? That concludes my rebuttal on why not to go on a cruise. Obviously, cruising is not for everyone, just like some folks would never step foot in Vegas or Disney or Europe, and some would never get their money's worth at an all-inclusive island getaway. But what is most puzzling is that cruising is the only travel experience that gets these types of Cruising Stinks articles. I have never seen the list of why not to go to Vegas or why not to go to Disney or why not to fly in a plane. Nope, just why you shouldn't go on a cruise. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope I've given details for you to make your own decisions on going on a cruise. Until next time, thank you for watching About Anything.